All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean Bolin. And um, at work, uh, we use uh, Twisted, uh, which is a Python library. And it's a uh, reactor. And I got interested in, like, you know, what is this reactor and pro actor design pattern? So I started to dig in to it. And I'm just going to show you what I came up with uh, and what I learned along the way. So uh, the reactor and proactor patterns are event-driven programming models, patterns that you'll find in Boost ASIO uh, and Twisted Python library. You can do them on the server side or the client side. Um, there's not too many resources online about what the difference between the two are. Um, the one book where it's pretty well codified is Pattern-Oriented Software Architecture by uh, Schmidt, Stahl, Rohner, and Bushman. So the reactor, it um, can wait for multiple requests concurrently. And once it has some requests available to process, it'll dispatch them to, to handlers. Uh, both the reactor and the proactor are primarily single-threaded models. Uh, you can use threads to kind of help you facilitate different things, but the idea is getting out of the thread per connection paradigm and uh, focusing more on asynchronous actions. So a super, you know, simplified approach would be you have this reactor and you can add handlers to it. Um, if anybody can figure out how to uh, get get pitch to stop converting my lambdas into uh, HTML links. Uh, let me know. Uh, I spent a little bit of too much time on that one. Uh, so the one success handler and two success handler, uh, those are just callbacks uh, that you'd get after like a one event was received or a two event was received. So the reactor is based off an event loop. Um, and typically, reactors are implemented using system calls uh, with uh, select or epoll. Um, so what this loop does is it's just going to uh, loop and it's going to wait for the system call uh, epoll to uh, let you know that some events have occurred. Uh, so those events could be like a couple clients uh, are trying to connect. Um, so, you know, the epoll and select calls are C-level uh, calls, but some, it can be nice to, you know, create, like, some basic abstractions in C++ for these things. Um, one of the limitations of a reactor is, let's say you have these handlers and um, a few different clients connect simultaneously. Well, if one of your handlers uh, is a long blocking operation, an operation that takes a long time to compute, uh, your clients could definitely uh, have some performance issues with that because they're going to be sitting around uh, waiting for this operation to complete. Um, so typically when you use a reactor, you really need to be cautious that your code executes quickly enough to return back to the other uh, events waiting for it. Uh, the proactor comes in and tries to solve some of the issues with the reactor. Um, it's a bit more complicated than the reactor. Um, it's fully asynchronous, and they can rely heavily on operating system functionality like Linux asynchronous I.O and Windows I.O. completion ports. Um, another aspect of the proactor, uh, you know, so the, the two words, there's, you know, reactor, reactive, and proactor, proactive. The reactor is just waiting for things to happen and it reacts to them. Whereas the proactor, um, you can kind of eagerly uh, fire off some of these asynchronous calls uh, uh, before a client even requests them so that they're more readily available uh, to serve. So using the proactor, uh, you can make use of asynchronous I.O. calls. Uh, with Linux, uh, you can link to the uh, RT real-time libraries. And the, um, 
the asynchronous I.O. Uh, reads, uh, like reads and notes.